so the title for today's session which i am going to take up is the learning outcomes in the context of online learning okay, okay. just give me a minute i think it is stuck up somewhere not coming to okay uh, so i hope the slides are visible you can give me the signal uh, the audience members i uh, guess ma'am it is visible thank you so i have titled this as the uh, in the context of online learning will be taking up this particular topic that is learning outcomes and the bloom's taxonomy which is used to categorize the learning outcomes at different levels and why this is important is because whenever you provide a course online maybe it's a program maybe it's a course or you are just taking a just a module small micro credential course learning outcomes always help you to motivate the learners towards the course because if it is specified in the beginning or maybe in the introductory video these excess motivators or a learner can compare what he or she is going to learn or what kind of skills knowledge he is going to acquire after the course and he can compare with what was his or what were his expectations from the course so it acts as a motivator so when we talk in terms of online learning you can offer a program means one can offer four years degree program or one can offer three years diploma program as we have been doing it aict or ignu is doing it or the neptel where we have the courses which are available or one can think of that a certificate course may be offered so looking at the program which may be a certificate which may be a pro diploma program which may be a degree program or which may be a masters degree program program consists of courses and when you look, look at courses what a course consists of course consists of modules so this is the hierarchy which is being followed in online programs for example just giving you an example of mba program which is available online on the swem platform we have number of courses which include accounting business analytics operation management etc and for example operation management then consists of modules up to 11 or so now here you can see office management and secretarial practice now this particular course consists of seven weeks and thus seven units are to be covered in this particular program you can have a closer look another example you can see is the business communication and here it is a 10 week program so they have arranged 14 units which you can call it as module 1 module 2 or you can keep it week 1 week 2 week 3 what will be the schedule of the topics which will be covered now here another course you can see is design technology and innovation just picked up from swem platform so it has been uh, divided into 10 modules and 10 weeks program is available online so what are the four essential requirements of any online learning uh, program or a courses that four quadrant approach has been used on the swem platform so i'll be referring to swem only so this is a national platform and the requirement is for any online learning four things that essential that is self learning material where a person can proceed at his own pace and a small chunks of information are provided followed by the task immediate feedback is provided and then the person goes to the next chunk of information so this is how when you talk in terms of program learning so that approach is being followed that you have a input you have a practice task 
followed by the feedback and then again you have input practice task and feedback so self learning material which are self sufficient and this is the one of the requirements of the online learning environment then this is to be supported by the videos now many a times the people who design and offer courses they can have videos covering the same content which is covered in the self learning material or the person can use videos as a supplementary material to self learning material so it adds to the knowledge or it could be videos which are providing overview of the topic and main points are discussed in videos and details are available in the self learning material so different approaches are being used by the people who design and offer programs or courses then the third essential requirement is discussion forum each program or a course or a module consists of a discussion forum where the learners can post questions enter into discussion with other peer members or they can enter into discussion with the coordinator of the program or the experts if they are involved in the program and the fourth component of online learning is the assessment which is inclusive of both formative assessment as well as the submissive assessment so with this component will be taking up uh, in another another session so i am not focusing on this so where comes the need for writing learning outcomes now first thing is whenever you design a program you prepare a introductory video for the online learning course or the program and that video itself consists of what is it that a student is going to learn or what kind of knowledge or skill the person will be acquiring and what he'll be able to do at the end of the program or the course or the module now here when you, we talk in terms of introductory for the program that means it will be focusing on the program outcomes if you are talking in terms of the course it will be talking in terms of the course outcomes that what a student or a learner will be able to do or is able to do at the end of that particular course of 8 weeks 10 weeks 4 weeks or maybe whatever is the duration of the course and a particular module there may be module outcomes so self learning material is the second component which comes after the introductory uh, video and here when we talk in terms of the self learning material when we prepare then each module starts with learning outcomes and whatever videos we are preparing they also can contain the learning outcomes or the activities which we inbuilt into the course there should be learning outcome what is it that a student is going to do after indulging himself into that particular activity so learning outcomes are used in the introductory course video in the self learning material in the videos in the task activities which we try to incorporate into our program or a course and learning outcomes as i have said in the beginning also these are nothing but simply the statements they are statements that what a student is able to do at the end of unit of instruction and as i said it can be a program so learning out can be written for the program learning out can be written at, for the course learning outcomes can be written for the modules the level may differ for example here you can see some random examples how do we state now for example this is course outcome for the course on research methodology now whenever a person is taught research methodology one is he is acquiring knowledge with respect to the concept of research the process of research the various designs 
of research, then how do we go about collecting the sample? How do we develop the measuring tools? How do we collect the data? And how do we analyze the data and re re write a research report? So in nutshell, when looking at why this particular course is being taught, if you try to answer this question, the answer may be that you want your students to undertake research of various types. And those types may be different depending upon whether it is historical research, descriptive research, correlational research, or it is ex post facto research or experimental research, or in broader terms, you can always think in terms of whether it's a basic research, applied research, action research, or evaluation research. So the process of research passes through different stages. And keeping in mind those stages, at each stage, what a learner will be able to do. First thing in the research methodology is select and define a research problem. Then comes review, though it is continued throughout the process of research, even for selection and definition of a research problem, one goes for review. But in terms of a problem, we say review the related literature, then select an appropriate research methodology. So whether your problem is amenable to a survey research, a case study research, or an experimental research, or correlational research, etc. And research methodology would include the sampling, the tools, and the statistical techniques for analyzing the data. And once this is decided, a learner is selecting or developing the measure tools. That means he'll be finalizing how he is going to measure the variables which have been taken in the study. Then how to go into the field or go to the lab or the workshop and how do we collect the data, what kind of experimental setup is there and how do we collect the data and then how do we go about the anal analysis of the data? And finally, what we expect is that a student is able to write a research report. You can add others also. Maybe once a research is complete or in the process, maybe the person requires to publish the paper. So he can write a, a journal article, which is based upon research. So these are few examples of the uh, outcomes when we take into account the course. Now, if you look at these, when I say, again, some examples, random examples. Now, define efficiency, define program, compare diesel engine with petrol engine, differentiate between deep and shallow, and write a program in C++. Now, here, when you look at these examples, these are from different fields. I've just taken it that all these learning outcomes are written in statement form and they uh, are telling us what a student is able to do on completion of a particular module, a particular course or a program. Now, if you try to compare these things, you will see all these learning outcomes start with an action verb. Define is an action verb. Compare, differentiate, identify, write, or design. All these are action verbs, and these are indicating the behavior which needs to be demonstrated by the learner at the end of unit of instruction. And second thing, you will see that these are always written in terms of learner's behavior. What a student will be able or what a learner will be able to do at the end of the program course or a module. And another thing is that this behavior, which is to be demonstrated, is observable. You, a person can define efficiency orally, can define efficiency in writing. So that means when a person orally gives the definition of efficiency or he writes the definition of efficiency, 
that can be observed and that thus it becomes measurable. You can compare the definition with the standard definition of efficiency and then you can make sure whether it is 100% correct, 90% correct and so on. Then another important point which is to be taken into account is that all these outcomes which we are stating, they are achievable. They are achievable, attainable. So nothing, if I say solve complex problems, now there is no limit to that. So where is the limit? Every problem cannot be solved. So you need to find out whether it is first order differential equation, second order differential equation, third order differential equation. What is it that a learner is able to do? So you need to be specific. And when I say these are attainable, achievable, these are time framed also. So when we talk in terms of program, the program outcomes are attainable at the end of four years, if we take a regular program. And likewise, if you allow online learning and you allow self-pacing, maybe you are allowing a person to accumulate the credits and he can complete the degree in eight years, 10 years, depending upon the time which is available to him. So there are rules and regulations which are specified. If we're talking in terms of regular program, which is offered in straight jacketed four years, at the end of four years, the program outcomes need to be demonstrated by the learner. And if we say course outcome, which is offered for 10 weeks, so on completion of 10 weeks, the person is able to demonstrate those competencies. And if it is a module, a part of, say, week one, it is module one, so whatever are the module outcomes, those will be demonstrated by the learner at the end of one week input which is provided to him. So these are time framed. So here you can see that all learning outcomes, uh, they have five important characteristics or there are five important characteristics of learning outcome that these are specific they start with action verb these are measurable and these are achievable and fourth thing you are saying is realistic they are realistic in terms of when you say achievable they are realistic they're relevant to the context in which we are operating and then finally they are time framed so in nutshell we can say that any good learning outcome will adhere to being smart. So acronym for this is SMART, one need to remember this. And here, when we look at any engineering degree program, American Board of Engineering and Technology had given us 12 program outcomes. So if you look at the programs which are offered by the engineering colleges, by the university departments, you will agree with me, with minor modification here and there, all these 12 outcomes have been retained for the various programs in engineering and technology. So depending upon whether it's a civil, electrical, electronics, mechanical, so things are made little uh, different in case of these program outcomes. Otherwise, these 12 outcomes find place in, if, in the programs of engineering and technology. And then when you look at codes, for example, data structures and algorithms. So you can see there are five course outcomes which have been prepared. That is to compare the usage of linear data structures, array, linked list, stack, and queue to design the algorithms using linear data structures to solve the problems, given programming problems, to use effective and efficient linear data structures, then to analyze time and space complexity, and to use appropriate. And then you can see as you move from the program outcomes, those are attainable at the end of the program. Course outcomes need to be demonstrated by the learner 
at the end of the course and these uh, this is another way of writing it uh, lets me for example when i was take an example of research methodology now here you can see it consists of number of topics and one of the topics which is covered there is that is module that is module 3 that is selecting and defining a research problem and for the module the outcomes are identify a significant problem for research identify the factors affecting or the causes for the identified problem next is select the variables state the research objectives and formulate the hypothesis for the study so at the end of selecting and defining a research problem if somebody has learned it what is it that is expected of the learner what he is able to do so he can identify he can identify the factors affecting he can select the variables he can state the objectives and he can formulate now one thing and let me give you another example of sampling techniques so each one of us when in undertaking research need to understand the various sampling techniques which are used so probability and non probability sampling techniques so you can see here explain the concept of sampling differentiate among two different types of sampling techniques that is probability and non probability or describe the procedure for various types of probability so what is the process that is being used in uh, maybe simple random sampling systematic random sampling and so on and then describe steps in selecting sample using various non probability sampling techniques and finally if given a study the person can use appropriate sample uh, select appropriate sample for the different types of studies so you can see as we progress from the program to the course to the module then you can see the degree of specificity increases or in other words if we move from module to course course to program the degree of generality varies so program outcomes if you can pay attention here they are written in more generalized terms now when you say apply the knowledge of mathematics science we are not talking in terms of one specific topic or one specific course in the applied sciences so it is holistic the general generalized statement is there here when you look at problem analysis again identify formulate review analyze complex engineering problems reaching substantiated conclusions using first principles of mathematics natural science and engineering science so when you move from program to data structures and algorithms every learning outcomes falls in the domain of data structures and algorithms and if you go to specific modules say in research methodology then each module the learning outcomes are specific to the module which is being offered so these are more specific as you move from uh, module to course degree of generality increases and program outcomes they are written at more generalized level now these outcomes which you can see can be classified into different levels and bloom way back in 1956 when they wrote that educational objectives they tried to classify the edu educational objectives into three domains one is the cognitive domain the second one is psychomotor domain third one is affective domain from the term itself it is evident cognitive means the acquisition anything which is re related to acquiring knowledge psychomotor deals with acquisition of skills Uh, that means which involve the cognition as well as the muscular coordination affective domain include all those learning outcomes 
which deals with which deal with attitudes behavior values soft skills etc so all those become a part of affective domain now when you look at your program outcomes if i simply go back to the program outcomes you can see here the very first thing when it talks in terms of engineering knowledge and it is talking in terms of application of that knowledge which a person has acquired it is in the cognitive domain when you go to the problem analysis again it is concerning application of knowledge to identify the problems analyze those problems third also deals with design solutions which is a more complex higher order kind of learning where a person is able to design solutions for complex engineering problems or when it talks in term of conduct investigation of complex problem so if it is research based maybe it is based uh, where we can think of application of knowledge if it is going to the lab where a person is going to do the experimentation or workshop then it can includes an element of the skill the psychomotor skill where the person needs to handle the machinery equipment tools etc and here you can see modern tool usage which is again dealing with the skill component that is psychomotor skill component if you look to 6 to 12th engineering and society environment and sustainability ethics individual teamwork communication project management and lifelong learning now all these are primarily a uh, learning outcomes which fall in the effective domain they have to do more with attitudes values pro ethics etc now here when we say these can be categorized into three components then let's find out at the in the cognitive domain what are the different levels of learning outcomes this is the older or the original terminology which was used by bloom in case of educational objectives and he used the terminology knowledge comprehension application analysis synthesis and evaluation as the outcome of learning but look at the new terminology which is given by anderson and craftwall the students of bloom they have replaced the noun with a verb they are talking in terms of the cognitive processes which are used by the learner to acquire that kind of knowledge so the lowest level of learning is remembering the next higher level is understanding then comes applying comes an analyzing evaluating and creating let me just go into little details now when we say remembering remembering means anything which requires rote memorization recall of the previously learned knowledge and use of that so remembering means re re rote re which requires rote memorization and recall of that information and reproduction of that information when it is needed this is the simplest lower level of uh, learning outcomes now see here when a person needs to give the name of machines he is going to give symbols or he is going to state the values of the constants or he is asked to he can write formula for various things or he can define various terms technical terms maybe force electromagnetic semiconductor status or maybe the person can give you the definition of machine definition of uh maybe ac machine or dc machine and so on this is nothing but this requires rote memorization it doesn't require any understanding at this level so the cognitive process which is used or the person is asked to state the rules maybe ohm's law charles law young's law he is not going to understand it but rote memorize and reproduce that when it is 
needed. So the examples here you can see when a learner can define things, define force, define training, or he can state laws of thermodynamics or advantages and disadvantages of 4G, 3G, or a person can label the parts of lathe machine. He can identify the parts of lathe machine. He can name two types of soil foundation or give the full form of the standard abbreviation used in any discipline. Or he can write the formula or he can write the units of voltage or he can identify switch from the given objects or enlist chemical or physical properties of a given material. All these verbs are representing rote memorization and recall of that rote, uh, rote memorized material. So these learning outcomes are examples at the remembering level. That is the lowest level of learning that takes place. The next higher level of learning outcomes is at the understanding level. When do we say the person has understood? When do we say the person has understood the concept of triangle or a circle or a rhombus or a person has understood the concept of a Q stack and array? When the person can explain these terms in his own words. He can give examples. He can summarize the relation, uh, the information in his own words. He can derive the relationship between the learned concepts. Say, when the person can say stress is directly proportional to stay or voltage is directly proportional to current. This is nothing where the person is deriving the relationship between the learned concepts. Or the person can extrapolate on the basis of the given data. For example, if the person is given data about the population, for the last 10 years, he can project the population of India in the year 2050. This is extrapolating. So when the person can compare the different terminologies or he can explain theories, models, structures in his own words, explain the principles in his own words, the applications of any concept or principle, then all those learning outcomes will fall in the category of understanding. Let me give you a few examples here. You can look at, now here, when you look at these, when somebody has to derive relationship between the concepts, that means he should have the understanding of those concepts, only then he'll be able to derive the relationship. Person is going to write the equations, then again, he need to uh, balance those equations and so on. Or the person is going to explain the concepts in his own words. He's not simply giving the definition of force or defining efficiency or stack or array, but explanation in his own words or examples of these concepts are asked for. Then procedure for writing up. One can wrote memorize the steps in a procedure, but one cannot uh, wrote memorize the details of what goes into that step that has to be explained in one's own word. Likewise, when in English uh, somebody reads a paragraph or an essay and he writes a prissy of that, it's nothing where the person has understood the thing. And interpretation of a graph also requires understanding of those concepts which are involved and the relationship that is indicated. So these are, these things when the person is involved in, these learning outcomes will be at the understanding level. Now you see how the verbs change when we write learning outcomes at the understanding level. Rather than writing, defining, stating, labeling, identifying, naming, we are now using explain. Explain the concept of software. Differentiate. Differentiate between manual and automatic manufacturing processes. Or 
give examples of array if you have understood the concept you will be able to give example interpret the relationship then project population which i have already given you so you can see that the verbs which we can use is explain differentiate compare um describe or detail out these are or interpret or project or give example the next higher level of learning outcome that is applying whatever concepts whatever definitions whatever theories whatever models we learn at remembering and understanding they need to be applied in a real life setting so applying includes all those learning outcomes which require a learner to apply the learned knowledge in a new situation the underlying word here is that whatever has been done in the classroom that is not to be repeated but a new situation is given to the person maybe it's an industrial scenario it's a real life setting and the person tries to apply the learned knowledge say for example a student of a school who has learned the principles of addition multiplication subtraction now he goes to the market buy few things bring back the balance and he is able to calculate the balance which he should have is nothing but he is applying the principle of addition multiplication and subtraction or a science student when he tries to connect wires in a switch or plug he is trying to use the principles of positive negative earth wire he is applying the rules when the person is going or traveling through a bus he is keeping the face in the direction in which the bus is moving he is trying to apply the rule of inertia of movement so whatever we learn and scientific principles scientific theories they are applicable universally other things remaining the constant so one has to look into where the knowledge is getting applied so here when you say i'm just taking example of principles and rules because when we say that the rules have been learned when they are able to apply so here you can see the examples and you can see here now when the person can use the formula apply in a new situation now here calculate you can uh, write determine you can say find right uh, words which verbs which can be used find determine cal calculate or a person is required to demonstrate the uh, principle of refraction or principle of inertia of movement or a person is asked to in english you have convert the given sentence into indirect speech so person is given a new sentence which he has not come across he is doing it conversion from direct to indirect it is applying write a letter to the company so is applying the principles of writing a letter uh, uh, in writing a letter to the company informing them of the manufacturing defects so apply you can use apply you can use calculate you can use determine you can use find out you can use convert you can write depending upon what the content matter is so these are sample verbs which can be used to write learning outcomes at the applying level then comes the next higher level of learning outcomes and these are at the level of analyzing now when we say analyzing it simply means breaking down the whole into its constituent parts and here say uh, when uh, somebody has written a program and you want to find out what is the mistake committed by the learner in that you need to analyze that there is a problem you need to analyze that problem what are the various factors that are impinging upon the problem or what is it that is leading to this particular situation say when we say uh, campus interviews and we say hardly 20 10 to 20% are students get campus placement what about the remaining 80 so what is it 
that is leading to this kind of situation, you need to break down the problem into its constituent. Are the students not knowledgeable? Do the do they not have the skills? Do they don't possess the soft skills? Do they are they not good at communicating? Are they not good at interpersonal? Are they not good at create? What what is it that is lacking? You need to analyze that, right? Or whether the instructional processes in place are not able to develop those competencies. Analyze. You need to analyze that. So some of the examples here you can see of the learning outcomes which requires the cognitive process called analyzing. When somebody has to identify the cause for causes for failure of a here what is missing is given. You can add that component given machine. It is not any machine that is available in the uh, book the causes of failure of machine. But if a given machine, it is identity. Hello, is there any question? Yes, I request the participants to kindly mute. Oh, yes, ma'am, please continue. Thank you. Another one you can see is look at the fault in the design. Now, every teacher ask the students to prepare a circuit diagram in for the lab when they go for experimentation or maybe in the class also. So you need to analyze what is the mistake fault made by the student if the circuit, if you can analyze that circuit diagram. Likewise, in the algorithm written by the learners, analyze the reasons for increase or explain the strengths and weaknesses of faculty appraisal system in vogue in your institution using the word explain so here you can see you can use verbs again identify was at the remembering level also locate analyze explain which was used at the understanding level also analyze so you can use different verbs to write the learning outcomes at the analyzing level and after analyzing what is the next higher capability or the competences evaluated. Evaluating involves uh, making judgments and taking a decision. So you try to evaluate things. You may try to evaluate a theory, evaluate a process, evaluate a program, evaluate a product, or you may evaluate an object, right? So what is it that you are going to evaluate? So evaluation always, say for example, I go to the market, I want to buy a TV for myself. I look to the various brands and then I try to compare the features of the various brands. And then I see which has the better features. So I have certain standards, norms, which are expected of a TV. I try to compare the features with that. And finally, I make a decision whether I want to buy, depending upon the resources which are available, the space which is available and so on. So I try to take a decision whether to go in for. Similarly, in any subject specific case, you have theories, you have principles, you have uh, concepts, which may be, or you have more than two materials which can be used, two techniques which can be used to produce something, manufacture something, or maybe you have a, uh, two products which can be used to run the vehicles like the petrol and diesel, or you have AC machine, DC machine. So in a given situation, which material will be more appropriate? Which machine will be more appropriate? Which theory will be applicable? Which principle will be more? Which material will be more durable or efficient or effective in a given situation? If you have to take those decisions, you are actually involved in evaluating. So some of the examples here of the learning outcomes at the evaluating level include judge the appropriateness now you can have different types of stairs 
so it is written judge the appropriateness of circular iron stairs for a given residential building now here you can see that we are trying to find out whether these will be appropriate or evaluate the effectiveness of communication system now uh, similarly you can say evaluate the effectiveness of 4g or 5g for mobile communication and so on or determine the appropriateness of performance appraisal policy judge the suitability of a given thesis for phd or select the institute and take an example or select this is civil select appropriate reinforcement technique for construction of a bridge with the given specification so what kind of reinforcement should go whether it's going to be steel reinforced glass reinforced or flyelch reinforced and so on and then you can see here you are looking at select an appropriate security tool for ensuring security of data information from the computer science so you can see that again different verbs are used to write learning outcomes for modules and uh, your verb will indicate to many um, many a times it is indicative of the level of the learning outcome and the highest level of the cognitive processes is where a person can synthesize the whole knowledge up to the evaluating level and he can create something new that idea may be new technique may be new plan may be new strategy may be new material can be new design can be new formulation of a plan can be new etc etc right so creating is the highest level of learning outcomes and these now when you ask a person to design a carburetor now he is not giving you the a design which is already available but he is coming out with something novel design a component of a machine design an organizational structure for achieving specified objectives maybe the management this write a program as per the client requirement now first thing is person needs to identify the client requirement say somebody coming to nitter and i triple t r and he would like to first know what are the major activities and what is it that a person would like to. so maybe the person has to write a program for dispersing the pay salary slip to the students or registering the students for any program for faculty development program and so on so what are the requirement depending upon that a program needs to be so there is no a uh, rigid fixed formula for writing a program so person has to keep in mind the requirement he'll be creating something as per the requirement create a local area network for a given organization then formulate professional development pools all these are nothing but examples so you can see create design write formulate evolve strategies these are some of the uh verbs which can be used to write learning outcomes at the creating level uh let me just go back to the audience for a while g o oh. and g up to this point uh friends who are listening to me any questions so far anything you would like to add that learning outcomes when we are talking in terms at the cognitive uh, domain the learning outcomes can be written at six different levels and one additional thing which we need to remember is that each subsequent higher level subsumes the lower level so when you write learning outcome at the understanding level it is assumed that the learning outcome at the remembering level has been attained by the learner and likewise applying so remembering and understanding if you go to analyzing that means up to applying the learning outcomes have been attained and creating means up to evaluating everything is attained by the 
learner so higher level subsumes the lower level of learning outcome so any question at this stage otherwise then i should proceed hello is there any question from the audience no anything written in the chat box let me check okay there is no no ma'am no question okay so let's proceed uh, then that we are looking at cognitive domain uh, maybe okay if you would like to just quickly examine your uh, understanding of this or maybe we can skip this today and uh, move to the next one another uh, is the psychomotor domain right the program that aims at enabling the learners to acquire psychomotor skills and i when i was explaining this term i said why psychomotor psyche deals with cognition motor deal with muscular coordination anything which you do in lab in workshop in the field where manipulation of material equipment that requires psychomotor skills and when a person has to acquire a skill it passes through five different phases that is imitation manipulation precision articulation naturalization giving giving you a very simple example say i have to learn how to drive a car now the first thing is i must have some knowledge of the car the various parts of the car the function of various parts of the car and so on the procedure of and so on and what happens then the expert driver tries to demonstrate how to start the car how to maintain the car in motion how to stop the car how to take left turn right turn how to give indicators how to accelerate de accelerate and so on so somebody is demonstrating the various acts and the novice the learner tries to copy that expert right uh, what the novice does is simply copies and this is what in terms of when we are teaching complex skill to our students then we first give a demonstration to the students in the lab in the workshop and say i have to go for field survey then somebody first demonstrate how to set the experiment and then do it and the students are simply copying that x so various x are learned through imitation then a stage comes where the expert tries to give the charge to the learner he says okay now you can handle on your own you can uh, sit on the driving seat you can drive the car yourself and he gives the controls to the learner what happened there are number of mistakes made by the person so error rate is high accuracy is less with lot of practice precision creeps in accuracy creeps in so accuracy comes in inserting the key uh, changing the gears put applying the brakes right or balancing the uh, what is it what do you call it the st uh, steering wheel right and so on then comes a stage here when precision occurs the person is able to perform the various acts but he is not able to coordinate the various movements hota kya hai somebody is sitting to you next to you starts talking so you please hold it i am not able to concentrate on the traffic i'll uh, bang into some other vehicle so please stop it and gradually with practice the coordination improves and now when you are driving the person sitting next to you is talking to you the radio or is going on or the stereo is going on then you are looking at the banners you are looking at the traffic you are able to manage articulation you are able to coordinate and the 
last stage in skill learning is when you are able to modify adapt your driving according to the weather condition according to the road conditions according to the uh, whatever you can say where you are so naturally say for example somebody who has assembled a mobile phone right and he has now mastered how to assemble the uh, mobile phones he can bring in new things into mobile phone he is able to bring in right so he is able to modify the existing the people who try uh, go in for hybrid kind of things hybrid motorcycles hybrid cars what they are doing they are adding some new features and the person who is skilled can do it a novice cannot do it so ability to modify ability to adapt is when you you have uh, actually mastered the skill and it becomes a second habit to you and here just have an example that uh, just giving you an example of say you are taking your students to verify ohms law simple thing and you have given them the manual following the manual they can do it so they are following the steps they draw the circuit diagram they arrange the apparatus as per the circuit diagram they clean the ends of connecting wires so you are just writing the procedure which is to be adopted by the learner to verify ohms law this is nothing but a psychomotor skill and here you can see when i write all the procedural steps by using a verb draw arrange clean make determine adjust uh, this is nothing where i then repeat this for three times four times or five times so i make five observations and come to the conclusions draw the conclusion so this is where this is nothing but these are learning outcomes each is a specific learning outcome to verify ohms law so you are breaking down the process to its steps and each step is written by using a verb this is nothing this is all learning the same way verify jules law another example you can see is when somebody is asked to connect the computers in the organization uh, so create a local area network so what are the uh, functions which are to be performed at the administrators end and what are the functions which are to be performed at the client computer so if you write them again writing using the action verb these are specific learning outcomes to achieve connect the computer in the local area network simple thing right so here uh, you can see this is taken from guru gobind singh in the first university and uh, then comes your effective domain i said effective domain consists of learning outcomes which deal with acquisition of attitude behavior values soft skills like creativity communication ability to work teams resilience etc so all these come into the effective domain and your program outcomes you have seen leaving aside primarily the first five the remaining seven deal with or falls in to the effective domain primarily they fall into the effective to you may have best of knowledge skills but if you don't have the right kind of attitude you cannot be successful we get in attitude determines your altitude so similarly here you can see how, just giving you a simple uh, layman's explanation of how do we uh, uh, acquire the value set now here comes the, the very first stage in acquiring the um, uh, val uh, values is the receiving we keep on receiving from our parents seniors teachers society and we all get do's and don'ts don't we 
देखिए गेट अप अर्ली इन द मॉर्निंग गो टू बेड अर्ली कॉपरेट विद अदर्स रिस्पेक्ट एल्डर्स है ना गो टू स्कूल रेगुलरली बी ऑनेस्ट बी ट्रूथफुल एटसेट्रा एटसेट्रा एंड लाइक वर्स डोंट्स है ना डोंट को डोंट बी डोंट बी जेलस ऑफ थिंग्स है ना डोंट बी स्पेंड थ्रिफ्ट राइट डोंट 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 डूज एंड डोंट्स वी कीप ऑन रिसीविंग वी हार्डली क्वेश्चन राइट and then a stage comes when we start responding to these do's and don'ts are why should i get up early in the morning why can't i be uh, go to bed late means i don't go to bed at 10 i go to bed at 12 or 1 i get up late in the morning why shouldn't i talk to strangers etc etc responding right now likewise when the students are in the lab and you ask them to prepare a circuit diagram so a student says i know what kind of circuit diagram would be there i can start uh, directly with the connections but you say no first you prepare a circuit diagram and then you ask him to get it checked and then you allow him to go for uh, connections safety so this is where the student has posed the question why shouldn't why can't i directly go and start making connection and then proceed with the experiment then the student pose question and you need to satisfy them responding they start some of the things they accept and they start following some of the things they start questioning and valuing is a stage where number of things uh, they are attached worth now people value money people value relationship people value work people value honesty people value truthfulness etc etc thousands of thing we attach worth to it but the question comes if it at one now uh, putting up in the hostel and uh, both have been late uh, in coming to the hostel yesterday night so the third friend is asked where are they he says i don't know he knows but he doesn't tell if he speaks truth at what time they came where they went students are likely to be punished he doesn't speak so his value was he can be honest he can give you all the correct information he can withhold the information so if he withholds now the priority whether he wants to be honest or whether he wants to give more um, uh, importance to the relationship he enjoys with the friends so that will determine what action would he take so priority each one of us prioritize the values the things we attach value to somebody values relationship somebody values money more than relationship somebody values relationship than honesty and so on or somebody is more honest and less value to the relationship so everybody has his own prioritization then characterization by value set is when you personify a particular value so when we say non violence mahatma gandhi right when we say social work we say mother teresa right why do we only two names there are many people who are non who are adhering to the principle of non violence or who are doing good social work but these two persons are the epitome of these two things personify these two values so this is where uh the value set correct most of us are at this stage valuing mo wo kehte hai na mukotte pehne hue so we are carrying masks with us and we change our value system as per the situation so here each one of us teacher would like to obey rules students to obey rules observe safety precautions attend classes maintain punctuality communicate 
effectively with others or communicate in large groups, small group, etc. Exhibit honesty. This ex some examples. So here you can see these. And uh, let me just go back here and the point which I was uh, emphasizing that for developing uh, these, uh, for enabling, uh, it is not working. Sorry, I have to use this. Going back to, okay. So here you can see the program outcomes where we have seen the engineer and society. Apply reasoning informed by contextual knowledge to assess societal health, safety, legal, cultural issues, consequent responsibilities relevant to the professional engineering. Practice is a matter of attitude. Matter of attitude. Environment and sustainability. Again, matter of attitudes. And then ethics, again, which falls in the effective domain. Then comes individual and teamwork. So again, it is falls in the domain of effective domain. Communicate effectively again. And here it's a combination of the two. Uh, but when you are talking to the manage, uh, like uh, work as a member and a leader, these uh, part of it would go into the effective part can go to the knowledge domain also. Lifelong learning, matter of attitudes. So falls in effective domain. So here you can see that learning outcomes, whenever you are preparing uh, programs or you are preparing, uh, uh, here you can see self-learning material uh, for a program, for a course. So program consists of courses, courses consists of modules. So you are preparing self-learning material and I've given you example from the research methodology course modules. They start with learning outcomes, videos, course, introductory video consists of course outcomes. Likewise, program uh, introductory material, introductory video will consist of program outcomes. And then for each module, when you are writing, preparing videos, so video will start may start with learning outcome for that particular module which has been covered in that video. So learning outcomes need to be written. And uh, to end with, I'll simply say that module, uh, these outcomes really help the learners in monitoring their progress through the program, through the course, or through the module. So they can monitor their progress with respect to the learning outcomes, which learning outcomes they have been able to demonstrate or they have attained, which learning outcomes they have not attained, right? Where they are facing the difficulty. It helps them to organize their study materials also. Uh, when they have a lot of material available, they can organize as per the learning outcomes. And another thing is, that attainment of a learning outcome itself is motivating for the learner to attain the next higher level of learning outcome. So it is a milestone which is achieved by the learner. If he has achieved learning outcome one, motivated to go for LO2, LO3, and so on. And uh, likewise, the instructor, the person who is uh, offering the program, the attainment of learning outcomes at different stages will help the person to be sure of that per the learners have attained this learning. Now they can proceed to learning outcome two, three, four, five, six. So the instructor can also monitor the progress of the learner, provide corrective feedback to the learners. He can provide correctives and uh, he can motivate them to excel, right? So these are some of the benefits of, I don't know, benefit of writing, learning outcomes.